so today we are going to talk some of the items that are used in church, in particular the vestments, uh, all the baju baju that the priest wears, uh, including the what the the, the deacon wears, uh, so that you have at least some idea of what are the different different kinds of uh, vestments that are used uh, in the in the church, especially for certain celebrations, uh, mass, uh, adoration, and so on. The most basic baju uh, or vestment that we use uh, is called a uh, kesok. Now, in this part of the world and in some other parts of the world, the kesok is white color. But if you go to Rome and some other parts of the world, uh, it's black color. It's white color here only for a particular reason, a uh, practical reason, mainly because uh, you try wearing black uh, in the hot sun here, you bang sun, you know. So that's why uh, over in this part of the world, we have, got, we have gotten permission many years ago to use white. Otherwise, uh, in other countries, normally the color is uh, black color. But if you are a religious priest, then it depends on the color of your habit. Uh, it's called a habit that the religious uh, priest wears. Uh, depends on the color that is uh, allowed according to the religious order. Uh, they will follow according to that particular color. Otherwise, for the priest, uh, uh, the priest, the deacon, and for some of the others, uh, normally the cassock would be in black color in other countries, uh, and in Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, and some other other countries where permission has been given, the cassock would be in white color. The next item that is uh, used by some of the priests uh, is called the alb. The alb is normally worn if the cassock is black color, so that's why. Uh, in this part of the world, uh, is usually not used because the the cassock uh, is already white color anyway. So the alb is used uh, on top of the black cassock to cover the ordinary clothing or the cassock of the priest if it's black color. Otherwise, uh, normally it's just the cassock alone. And if you are using a uh, alb, then normally you will tie the alb uh, with what we call a cincture. So we just look at the the next item that we are looking at is uh, what you tie on top of your cassock uh, called an amis is to protect the neck area especially if you are wearing one of those old old uh, cas uh, old, old chasubles uh, or the vestments uh, that the priest uses uh, for mass so this one is very rarely used in this part of the world perhaps in a uh, in certain uh, countries where the elk may not cover the cassock of the priest properly especially if the cassock of the priest is very elaborate, uh, black color cassock, then the amis might be used. Otherwise, in other situations, the amis is not commonly used nowadays, uh, especially in Malaysia and uh, Singapore. You can look at the details of the amis uh, in your notes uh, later, which I already shared with you earlier. Now, of course, if you are wearing an uh, elk, then the cincture will be used to tie around the elk. Uh, and the cincture is a liturgical vestment to symbolize chastity and purity. Eh? For a priest and a deacon, the priest and deacon will wear a stole. Of course, uh, for, the, for the priest, the stole is worn uh, in this way. So I actually have got an example of a stole over here. So this one is normally used for confession. Eh? Uh, and it's uh, normally worn uh, in this way for the priest. Whereas for a deacon, it is normally worn in the, this way. So it is worn from the left to the right. That's for deacon, you know. For, for the priest, uh, it is worn around the neck in this way. So the stole is uh, to, state, to indicate the state of ordained office. So a priest will always wear a stole for special liturgical functions, including confession. So that's why when you come for confession, uh, the priest will wear a stole. Uh, whether the stole is elaborate or simple, doesn't matter. The priest will always be wearing a stole for certain significant liturgical functions, including baptism also as well. Chasubles, uh, we've got different, different uh, types and colors and so on. 
uh, basically it is the the baju or the vestment that is used for mass uh, and uh, so that's why if you look at uh, the mass the priest will always wear a uh, chasuble for the different different liturgical seasons there are different colors involved you can read the notes uh, in more detail later we have got purple or violet chasuble for advent and lent for the burial of uh, a christian burial or mass for the dead purple is also used rose is used for only twice a year twice in a year you know uh, the first one is when you are celebrating Godet sunday or the third sunday of advent and the second one is Letare sunday which is the fourth sunday of lent otherwise uh, rose is normally uh, not used except for these two celebrations so it is to symbolize the midpoint because we are halfway to christmas towards christmas and easter so that's why rose is used not many parishes would have the color rose so it is not a compulsory color uh, for some parishes where they may not be able to afford just one particular chasuble just to be used twice a year so that's why it uh, depends on the parish uh, and whether they can afford uh, a rose chasuble or not some of the chasubles in uh, in uh, in philippines may be quite cheap so they may be able to afford the chasubles from there and uh, you can get rose chasubles from there also as well white and gold symbolizing rejoicing and purity of soul uh, used for christmas and easter as well as for the feast of uh, saints and solemnities where the saint is not a martyr uh, if the saint is a martyr then the chasuble is red color otherwise it's normally white color for the saint huh? so you can see some of the reasons why it's used as uh, of saint joseph feast of all saints saint john the baptist john the evangelist chair of saint peter and so on now for christian burial and masters for the dead white can also be used so uh, there, are, there are certain situations where white may be used to symbolize Christian burial for Christian burial and uh, masters for the dead, to symbolize the resurrection of the Lord when he triumphed over sin and death. So uh, it can be used also as well for a uh, Christian burial or mass of the dead, but it's normally not so commonly used in this part of the world. Of course, in some cases, you might see it in other parishes green very commonly used for ordinary time symbolizing hope and life so you can read more details of the green chasuble over here and of course red has got two meaning la. one is to symbolize the shedding of blood the second one is to remind us of the holy spirit where we ask the holy spirit to come down and strengthen us so that we will be able to go forth and preach the good news so after the chasubles uh, we have got the demotic the demotic is used by the deacon uh. the deacon is the one who wears the demotic and it's uh, normally according to the liturgical color of the of the of the day of the of the particular season the cope uh, is what is used uh, for processions and for benediction you see a very long kind of baju uh, we are kind of claps here you know it's like claps over here and it is used for uh, procession and for benedictions uh, in particular for benediction and procession and vespers and solemn praise so in uh, if you are celebrating solemn vespers for example you would also use the cope as well the humoral wheel is used to hold the the monstrance uh, to, to show that it is Jesus that is blessing us, you know, not the priest, you know, when he's holding the monsters. That's why the humoral wheel is used. And the humoral wheel uh, is quite elaborate uh, in the design. Uh. You can see examples of the humoral wheel when you go for uh, benediction. And those of you who have got a chance to go to the sacristy, you may be able to see the humoral wheel as well surplice is the kind of uh, baju or overslot that is worn by the choir and for certain 
liturgical services uh, and uh, it is not commonly used uh, except for certain situations where it may be worn when the priest is actually assisting the bishop for example or by the choir members during liturgical services so uh, the choir members can actually wear a surplus if they want to it's also worn by other servers also as well now this one is for the bishop la, uh, priest won't wear uh. bishop will wear a mitre or a, or a hat uh, or topi we call it a, a turban or bandage for the head or band uh, it is used to signify his dignity and authority uh, of the bishop the crozier is like a shepherd's staff you know or shepherd's crook you know you know in the those of you who have seen uh, how sheep are cared for uh, you know sometimes the sheep uh, will run here run there run everywhere so what happens is that they use the staff uh, or the or the crook uh, to grab the sheep by the collar or the neck or something like that so that the sheep won't run off somewhere you know so that's how the staff is used so of course the bishop won't use this to grab our necks like you know but it is uh to symbolize his role as the shepherd of his diocese. So the Archbishop's pallium, uh, or pallium is uh, to signify the dignity of the Archbishop as the, the big boss or so-called big bishop uh, of the Metropolitan Archbi Archdiocese. For example, Archdiocese of Kuala Lumpur, our Archbishop Julian Liao would wear the Archdi would wear the pallium. Other bishops, like for example, Bishop Sebastian and Bishop Paul, Bernard Paul, uh, won't wear the pallium because they are not archbishops but bishop. So the rank of bishop uh, is the same, you know. So it doesn't matter whether you are archbishop or bishop, you are still a bishop. But the only difference is that because archbishop re refers to uh, uh, an area called the Metro Metropolitan Archdiocese, uh, usually a bigger area, then the archbishop will be given. Uh, Pallium. The wimpa is what is worn by the altar servers uh, to hold the mitre and the staff or the crook uh, of the archbishop. So if you notice, uh, it looks almost like a uh, humeral veil, you know, but it's very different in the sense that it doesn't have any additional design on it. Uh. It's quite a simple design. The only purpose of it is to hold the the mitre or the staff of the bishop, kind of like the uh, stylo milo a bit lah, you know. But the purpose is to do to hold these items lah. These are important items. So these are some of the items that we use for the vestments uh, for the church. Uh. Now the next items that I'll be going through with you. Is what we call liturgical items. Liturgical items. These are used to sprinkle, uh, sprinkle holy water on people. Aspergillum is the device uh, where you use to sprinkle on people. And aspersorium is the, the bucket uh, that is used to hold holy water when you want to dip it inside to sprinkle. On uh, the faithful during the the mass, uh, especially uh, on special celebrations. Uh. Take for example, if you are celebrating the season of Easter, it is recommended that instead of using the penitential rite, the priest can choose to sprinkle the people with uh, holy water uh, at the to replace the penitential rite. So he will go around uh, and sprinkle. If let's say the church very big, uh, then they might actually use uh, ask, ask other community ministers or whoever to help to sprinkle holy water on others father you're not sharing screen mother. i'm not sharing screen is it mother is blank la. blank la? blank yes oh okay whole thing is blank let me let me change that can you see or not Yep. Okay, so earlier I was mentioning about the aspergillum and aspersorium. Uh, these are items that you can use to sprinkle holy water and to 
hold the holy water in a bucket. Huh? Then the crutalus uh, is used to replace the bells, uh, especially after the evening of uh, Monday Thursday, right up to Holy Saturday. So this is a very rare item used nowadays. Uh, in the past, I was quite commonly used, but nowadays it's very rarely used. Uh. So instead of using the bell during this time, they will use this item uh, to, to, to shake uh, so that you can hear like clack 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 sound, you know. To, to remind the people to pay attention uh, to certain special events uh, during the Mass. So this is only used during the, the time after Holy Monday Thursday right up to the Gloria on Holy Saturday. From the Gloria on Holy Saturday onwards, the bells will be used again. So if you notice the item on the left over here, it looks like one of those items uh, that you use uh, when you go for football match, you know, but it's different, you know, it's not the, the kind of thing. Uh, it is similar, but the sound and the design of it uh, is to get the faithful to pay attention uh, towards certain special uh, parts uh, of the celebration uh, after the Holy, the Monday Thursday, right up to the, before the Gloria of Holy Saturday. You would rarely see this item nowadays, but in some churches, especially the older ones, they may still have these items uh, in, their, in the sacristy. Uh, and since these items are not so easily available, uh, it depends on the parish priest on how they want to use it, uh, especially in between uh, Holy Thursday or Monday Thursday up to the before the Gloria on Holy Saturday. The Easter or Paschal candle, you have already seen this many times already, and it's placed from the beginning of uh, the Easter vigil, once it's placed on the stand, uh, right up to the end of Easter. After that, when there's a baptism, when there's a funeral, then it will be placed uh, at the altar. Otherwise, other than the time of Easter, uh, it will be placed in a proper uh, prominent position uh, away from the sanctuary. This item is used for especially new members, uh, uh, the white garment when you are when you are doing baptism. So the the, out, the adults and the children would have a similar kind of garment, uh, which is used for baptism. So this is only used once by the particular adult or child. After that, uh, it's not used again. Now, if you recall previously, we had what we call a funeral, what we call a pall which is used to cover the, the pattern eh? so, or the chalice. In here, we've got even a funeral pall, which is a large cloth to cover the casket during the liturgy. Now, this one is optional, you know, because uh, in some parishes, uh, I remember, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in Kuantan, uh, they don't have this, you know, but in some other parishes, they may have this particular uh, funeral pall. So this funeral pall is used to remind us of our Christian dignity of the person. Eh? The churibal is the metal sensor that is used, uh, the priest uses to swing eh, and to bless, to, to incense the uh, different, different, the altar, the monstrance and so on. So the churibal is a metal sensor used to do, to do all these, all these uh, different uh, worship services la. and the boat is basically uh, an item where all the incense is uh, stored so normally we try to use the kind of incense uh, which is already pounded already you know you know the that uh, mortar that you use uh, similar to the one that you use to pound chili or something like that right so after you have already pounded the the incense already into very small pieces or even powder form then it's put inside here for the priest to, to dig out and put into the curable when he wants to incense uh, whatever. La. Liturgical crucifix is what we use uh, right in front of the altar there. Now, it is one of those items uh, which is not very uh, long ago la, uh, because if we look at the item, uh, it is to remind us that the Focus uh, is not for the priest to see, you know. The focus uh, is to remind us that the altar 
is the same sacrifice as Calvary. So that's why you look at the crucifix that uh, is normally faced towards the altar to remind us that we are going to have Mass and we're going to have the celebration of the sacrifice of Calvary at the altar. The lunette is uh, the round item or the semi-round item where you put the consecrated host to be put into the monstrance. Huh? And of course, this is the monstrance. Right? You have seen this before many times. And it's meaning to show us, to show the Blessed Sacrament to others uh, during the benediction and so on. Or the uh, when we are adoring the, the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. <coughs> Holy water container, similar to this one. Huh? So this is the holy water container where we use it to sprinkle holy water on people or to bless items uh, uh, for special occasions. Uh, and this one is uh, refilled uh, from the holy water container outside. You know. So we got uh, quite a big container outside uh, in the church. Uh. If you look at the church, you will normally find a big container of holy water where it can be dispensed into a holy water bottle similar to this. And a pig sir, is a round item. You would have seen it before for those of you who are uh, extraordinary ministers of communion. This is what we call a pig sir. And inside here, uh, you can see uh, the, the inside where the communion host is put inside for the communion minister to bring or even the priest to bring and to go to give to the homebound especially. So these are holy oils that are used for different occasions. Uh. We have three holy oils which are blessed during the Thursday, uh, the Christmas on the Thursday, or depend on your, depending on the bishop. Uh, sometimes Christmas may be held other than on the morning of Holy Thursday or Monday Thursday. So if it's held on a different day, then uh, the Christmas uh, is where the, the bishop will bless the three holy oils, oil of salvation, a sacred chrism, and oil of the infirm. So you have three different oils that are blessed. And uh, if you have been to Christmas before, you will observe how the different different prayers are prayed uh, by the bishop during the blessing of the holy oils. So there are three abbreviations or short form that are used for the holy oil, OS or oil of salvation. SC for sacred oil, sacred chrism, and OI for oil of the infirm. So these are the three holy oils. Oil of salvation, OS, for the baptism, uh, during the baptism, you, 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 you place it on the forehead, uh, not on the forehead, on the, on here, you know, on the, on the chest here, towards the top of the chest here, when you are, blessing the person uh, and anointing the person uh, to ask the Lord to give him strength, give him or her strength uh, before baptism takes place. So usually the oil of salvation is uh, prayed together with the uh, prayer of exorcism. La. Oil of the infirm for those who are sick, uh, we normally uh, do use this oil for the, for the anointing of the sick. So bear in mind, uh, sick does not mean uh, if you got sore throat la or toothache la or uh, backside backside pain la or uh, you got a, a stomach ache la or something like that, that's not sick, you know. Sick means uh, you're quite seriously sick la. So normally, uh, that's why if you notice uh, sometimes uh, in some places, uh, if you go for uh, for the blessing of the of the sick uh, and elderly, especially in uh, certain masses, uh, the priest will normally uh, remind uh, remind you. Uh, Please do not come forward if you are not uh, seriously ill, la, you know. For example, if you are having a toothache, la, slight headache, la, and all this kind of thing, uh, these are normally not classified as sick. If you are having some sort of uh, uh, serious illness or whatever, uh, or if you, are, if you are less mobile or something like that, then uh, it may be possible for you to receive the oil or the infirm. So it's not play play, you know, not supposed to be simply just give to people uh, uh, chin chai, chin chai, you know. There is a reason why we 
give the oil or the infirm is particularly for those who are uh, quite ill or immobile and require the healing of the Lord. So these are things that you have to bear in mind. Lah. Sacred chrism is used for two situations. One is uh, during the baptism. Uh, there are actually three. Lah, uh, baptism and then confirmation where the bishop will confirm the candidate and the, during the holy orders where the deacon, where the, where, the, where the priest will be blessed with the holy oil. Uh, the priest will be blessed with the holy oil. So that's why uh, it's used during these three times and it is blessed by the bishop during Christmas Mass. So these are the different different liturgical items that you will see uh, during the in the in the church. Uh. Next, we will look at some of the other items. Uh. Let me just go into the next slide. Sacred space, la, uh, sacred space. I will share with you now. Can you see? Okay, so sacred space uh, is uh, the the kawasan or the area of the church uh, which we we differentiate uh, according to its function. Uh. So, for example, we have got the sanctuary area, uh, which is raised uh, normally raised uh, in front of the church, where the altar, the embo, the celebrant's chair, the tabernacle is placed. Uh. And separate from the from what we call the nave, you know, where the people or the faithful are, are seated at the nave, and the priest and the deacon and the altar servers uh, and certain acolytes or whatever are placed at the sanctuary area. Sacristy is where all the different different items are stored. It's also known as a vestry or preparation room. So you will notice that uh, if you have been to a sacristy before, you will notice all the different different drawers and uh, cupboards and all that, uh, where all the different vestments are kept, as well as all the different linen and whatever is uh, kept as well. So the sacristy is not meant for just anybody to go in. Only certain authorized people are allowed to enter the sacristy, and the priest will normally say, uh, who are the people who are allowed to enter the sacristy, mainly the sacristan, uh, but to a certain extent the extraordinary ministers of, of uh, communion uh, and also the, the priest, of, of course the priest and the deacon and certain uh, and altar servers uh, are allowed to go into the sacristy. So other people uh, should not be simply going inside, you know, uh, even if you are looking for somebody also, perhaps you might want to just uh, knock on the door uh, so that someone will be able to open and ask whether you got anything to, to look for or whatever because uh, you're not supposed to just simply go inside like that lah, okay? So the sacristy is uh, normally not for other people to enter except for certain people only. The sacrarium, if you have uh, been to the sacristy, is a special thing where you will actually use uh, to clean the different different uh, linen, uh, the cloth, uh, for example, the the uh, corporal, the purificator, and so on, which I mentioned to you uh, previously. And this is where the these items are, are washed. And if you notice, uh, there's something like a sink at the bottom, uh, the, there's a hole at the bottom. This one is a pipe uh, which actually goes directly into the earth, you know, so that the water, after washing all these, all these barang barang, uh, it will go directly into the earth so that it won't be easily trod by people, you know, so it will go directly into the earth to protect the sacred substances uh, from being desecrated. So in case, for example, uh, if there's a chalice or, you know, a ciborium or even a communion bowl uh, where, where it's not clean properly or something like that, then the, normally the sacristan will go uh, and clean it at the sacrarium to make sure that all these items uh, are, are properly clean. The nave, as I mentioned, is where the laity prays and worship. Similar to what we call uh, a, a navy uh, where the, it's like the passenger of the ship, you know, uh, 
destined for heaven. La. <laughs> so that's where the nave is. La. So uh, now the pews, uh, if you notice, uh, the church has got pews. Uh, in the church, uh, the pews uh, are not compulsory. You know, some churches, uh, especially you go to Rome, uh, they may not have pews. You know, they may have uh, chairs or something like that instead. You know, so pews, uh, it, the, the, the main purpose of the pews uh, is basically to just to let uh, people to be able to sit in a so-called organized manner. La. Otherwise, uh, normally uh, in some churches, uh, you may not see uh, pews there. So the confessional is where normally confessions are heard. But however, confessionals are not uh, found in every church. La. You know, some churches uh, don't have a confessional because uh, they may not have the space uh, to build a proper confessional. So it depends on the church also as well. Uh, if there's no confessional, then normally the priest will be uh, seated at a certain place uh, where it's uh, not so easily heard. Uh, and then the faithful are asked to go there to for their confession. Uh, uh. So confessional, it depending on the on the church, some have it, some don't have it. Uh, due to the present situation of COVID, uh, the confessional may not be so commonly used uh, because of the of the risk of the COVID uh, being stuck in the environment of the confessional. So uh, at the moment, uh, normally we either have it in the, in the priest's office or somewhere open air or something like that for confession. So confessional uh, depends on whether the parish is, has got the space to put it or not. Embry is where you put all the, uh, the holy oils. Uh, all the holy oils. Some churches have got it, some churches don't have it. It is not a compulsory uh, item. Uh. If you have it, then very good. If you don't have it, then you might want to just uh, suggest to your parish priest whether he might want to put the embry to show or display the sacred oils. Of course, uh, it is up to the parish priest. It is not a compulsory thing. It is just to keep the sacred oil uh, in a safe place and also for people to see, oh, these are the sacred oil oil of salvation, uh, sacred chrism, and the oil of the infirm. Baptismal font is what we use to baptize uh, the adults and babies. La. So you might have seen it before. This one, uh, hope, usually we re try to recommend that it is in a more permanent place, but sometimes due to limited space uh, in, the, in the church, you might have the, the kind of baptismal font uh, where you can move it, you know, uh, so it is used to for baptism only. Uh, it's for baptism only. This is not uh, to put your hand inside to as holy water uh, to bless yourself. You know, not for that. You know, uh, it's for baptism only, la. So in case you see this kind of thing, uh, just make sure that it's a baptism font and not a holy water stoop. You know, we will talk about the holy water stoop in a while. So the ambo. Is a place where the readings, the responsible psalm, the Easter proclamation, and uh, the homily is given, as well as the prayer of faithful uh, may be may, may be prayed la. So the ambo is not just for anybody to go and make announcement or thing like that. Uh. It is meant for these uh, specific purposes. So there is an ambo and there's a lectern, you know. The lectern uh, can be used for many other things, like including uh, announcements and also announcing the page number for the hymn or whatever. But the embo, as I mentioned here, is only for the readings, the responsible psalm. Readings, of course, includes the gospel, uh, the responsible psalm, the Easter proclamation, uh, where the priest will give the homily from there, as well as the prayer of the faithful. So the lectern uh, is for other things, like you know, sometimes you've got announcements by the commentator if there is a need to and uh, other things as well. Lectionary is uh, is where all the readings are obtained from. Uh, we've got normally three volumes. Uh. First volume is for Sundays and Solemnities. Second volume is for weekdays. And the third volume is for the special occasions. La, uh. Common, uh, common uh, the saints, la, uh, special rituals la, and votive masters. You know. So for example, Votive masters, for example, would be uh, a memorial uh, for the for the disease. La, uh, a memorial for a disease is what we call a votive mass. 
holy water fawn or stoop is where you can dip your finger to uh, bless yourself uh, uh, when you when you want to bless yourself with holy water of course uh, at this time uh, uh, normally the holy water stoop is not used because of the of the concern that uh, it might be spreading the holy the the covid germs or virus you know so that's why at the moment it's not used uh, we hope that in the near future when things are better then we can start using the holy water stoop again so for the time being uh, if you want to bless yourself with holy water you can get the holy water from the container uh, somewhere in the church uh, whether in the outside the church uh, or near the church uh, where there is a container to dispense holy water you can get it from there to bless yourself with holy water if you wish to do so so the presidential chair is where the the priest will sit down uh, the priest will sit down uh, for the uh, liturgical functions stained glass uh, some parishes might have this stained glass quite nice you know you can see some of the stained glass uh. you know many years in the past uh, not many people know how to read and write you know so uh, the stained glass uh, is uh, to teach uh, a particular uh, gospel or bible message or religious teaching you know so that's why stained glass uh, is meant for that uh. and also because the glass uh, is stained uh, it is less easy for people to see inside you know so you've got some privacy here uh, when you want to pray and of course with the light going through uh, uh, you can get you can let the natural light go through also as well station of the cross you have seen it before uh, there are 14 station of the cross in the uh, in the churches and uh, some churches you've got statues and pictures uh, and these statues and pictures are meant to remind us of the saints uh, or mother mary you know we don't worship the, the statues and pictures what we do is we venerate and adore them reminding us of the particular saint or mother mary so this is something we have to be very clear about uh. so uh, sometimes uh, we have to be very careful on how we do things uh, especially when it comes to the scenes and uh, pictures uh, so that we won't cause other people to misunderstand uh. so these are the different different items uh, vestments and statues and so on uh, which you can find in church uh. so all together uh, for the past uh, today and uh, the last time uh, i went through 70 items you know of course you can read more details uh, in the notes I'm not going to read through the notes one by one. If I do that, uh, I think uh, a few days or so cannot finish, you know. So the idea of the notes is so that you'll be able to follow the what I've really gone through with you. I hope that you go through the notes uh, properly. And then later, you can try the quiz. Uh. There are two sets of quiz questions. Uh. I believe some of you have already tried it already. But since you have already uh, gotten the notes already, you can go through it. And then you can try the quiz question. But of course, la, when you are doing the quiz, uh, don't look at the note. La. Don't churi ayam. La. Try to do the quiz uh, without, going through the, without going through the notes so that you can see how much you know or how much you have grasped uh, so far. Bear in mind that the quiz uh, is not exam. You know. We are not trying to see whether you pass or fail. Whether you can get everything correct or not, it's up to you to slowly learn. But the idea of the quiz is so that you at least have some idea of uh, where you stand. La. And then you can uh, revise uh, and go through the items again so that uh, it will be easier for you to understand and appreciate the different different items uh, that you can find in the church. Perhaps there may be certain other items that are not mentioned here, but these are the key items that you need to know and you can actually use, uh, especially in your RCIA class or your catechism classes, uh, to teach our uh, candidates and also our catechism children uh, what are the different different items you can find in church? Any questions? Father? Yep. Because here, yeah, Father. Uh, yeah. There's some, some priests, they, when they hear confession, they don't wear the stole. Is it okay? They are supposed to wear the stole. Yeah, but then sometimes they don't. But is it, is it valid? 
I mean, it's valid, la, you know, it's still valid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you're supposed to wear the stole. La. The priest is already ordained, la, huh? but yeah, yeah. Uh, you're supposed to wear the stole to symbolize our office also as well, la, you know. Okay. And uh, it's a purple stole. So there may be a good reason why the priest uh, is not wearing a stole. For example, if he goes to a, a place uh, where he cannot find a purple stole, and uh, I mean, normally you can wear a, a white stole or some other stole, la, you know, but uh, if you cannot find a purple stole, then the priest may, 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 uh, not wear a stole, but by right, you should be wearing a stole. La. Thank you, brother. All right. Okay, can I say something? Yeah. Yeah, uh, you, you talk about the sacristy, uh, that ah. uh, no one is allowed to enter, right? Yeah. You can hear me or not? Yeah. Okay. In our church, uh, we, we do flower arrangement there, you know? Yeah, that's why uh, not just any Tom Ding and Harry can enter, la, you know? Only certain oh, people mean, the priests allow. Oh, you mean to say that when we do the flower arrangement, you are, we are entitled to enter? La. If the priests allow, then can enter. La. If the priests don't allow, don't simply enter. La. No, all the years we have been doing it. Yeah, because in the case of uh, flower arrangement, your oh. barang barang might be in the sacristy, what? Yeah, for the altars, yes. Uh, so if that's the case, uh, then the priest may allow you to to go there and uh, do la. But uh, otherwise, uh, uh, other others are, are not uh, supposed to enter the sacristy la. And then the, there's another thing. Yeah. The sanctuary, uh, you know, the sanctuary. Yeah. No one, no one is allowed to go up there, right? Uh, the depends sanctuary on... does. No, you see, if you're not if you're not performing a specific function, then you're supposed to go there la. But, but but the strange thing is, I, I like to question, uh, you see, uh, the thing is, I, I see some, uh, especially after mass, you know, after mass, when the yeah. priest had done the rituals, all this, uh, I, I see people do walk up there, but but then when I go up there, the priest does not allow me to go up there. But certain priests allow me to go up there, but other people also go up there. And what, why is it like that? I still don't understand. I don't know. That one you have to ask the priest. Is it because uh, it's holy, is it? No, no. You have to ask the priest why he don't allow you. I wouldn't know why. Yeah. You have to ask him. Like, I wouldn't know what's the reason. Okay. That's you all. Father. Ah, okay. Father. Yeah. About the anointing of the sick, uh, you know, yeah. during um, feast days, uh, yeah. normally... Uh, Normally, there is one day allocated for anointing of the sick. Uh, depends. So, uh, uh. Uh, so, what do you mean by elderly, uh, Father? If a uh, senior citizen, say senior citizen 16 and above, not, uh, no, no illness, uh, you know, can, can we go for anointing of the sick? I mean, in most cases, uh, if you're elderly, senior citizen and all that, uh, we won't, we won't uh, be so abrupt as to stop you, uh, you know, but you have to think mm -hmm. also, whether you you really need uh, to be anointed. Uh, if let's say you are 60 and in good health, uh, then maybe mm -hmm. not necessary. But if you are 60 and uh, a bit frail or something like that, then of course you, you can go. Oh, no, why? Because some people, they are afraid that, you know, uh, you know anything can happen, Father. So, I mean, say, uh, anything can happen anything to a 40 year old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. So, uh, better refrain, uh, Father. No, unless it's, unless it's like, for example, you are elderly and you are you are frail or whatever, or you may have some mm. sort of illness or whatever, then of course, la, you know, but if you are in very good health, the pink of health, uh, then may not mm. be necessary. La. Okay, thank you, Father. Yeah. Uh, Father, yes, I have a question. Uh, if the person is uh, having an operation, can they go and ask for blessing or just uh, also can have the holy oil being blessed uh what sort of operation? operation major op la major of course la uh, major op can la uh, of course la if you talk about uh, pull your teeth out then no la <laughs> no, no, no. major op major op uh, major op different la of course I see and uh, what about blessed salt you didn't mention it it's uh, how how does the blessed salt uh you know related to our catholic faith because some people use it, but I don't know how uh, this blessed salt is uh, being used. The blessed salt is uh, used to bless the holy water. La. 
Oh, but uh, it is not. Very, it's uh, not compulsory. It is. Uh, you know, depends on the on the. Uh, some places uh, they may use it to bless the holy water. Some may not use it, like, You know, so. Uh, the most important thing would be for the water to be blessed by the priest before it is used, lah. I see. I see. Thank you, Father. All right. Next. Okay, so I hope you will go through the notes again. I've already given you the link to the notes. There are about 70 items over there for you to, to read uh, in your own time. The idea is so that at least uh, you have a better understanding of what are all these barang barang in church. Lah. Of course, uh, I won't be able to go into very, very great detail. You want to go into great detail means uh, I think uh, you need one month or so <laughs> because of a lot of... Uh, history and background behind all these items uh, which are beyond the scope of this uh, introductory course la, you know uh, throughout the years uh, in the seminary we will have studied this in a bit more detail but uh, it, it is uh, the details are such that it is meant for those who are who want to know a lot more la, then maybe we can look at that later la. but for now the most important thing is at least you are aware of all these items and uh, you know what it is for and uh, from there you get a better appreciation of these items. For that, one more question. Yeah. I know during when the Archbishop is celebrating the Mass, he removed his mitre. Eh? Mitre, is mitre. Mitre, sorry, the mitre. Why, why did he move, remove the mitre? The, when he the, removes the mitre, Ah. That one is for auto servers lah. That one I'll talk about it later. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you for that. Ah. Okay, so if we can we we if no more questions, we will come to the end of this uh, course. Uh, as I said, it's an introductory course. You are, of course are encouraged to go through the notes. And later you can try the quiz as well. As well. Uh, I will be able to see uh, your what you've answered, you know. So uh, it's also good for you to know and also good for you to assess yourself uh, and also to learn from there. The quiz uh, you can take as many times as you like, uh, if you want, uh, if you want, so that you can get a better understanding of all the different different barang. Of course, uh, the quiz will not be covering every single barang, uh, but at least you have a better understanding. Uh, as you go along. So as you come to end of this uh, short introduction for the past two lessons, we ask the Lord to help us so that we will be able to become better informed as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we ask you Lord to bless each and every one of us as we come to end of this course. We ask you Lord to also help us so that we will be better informed and better prepared, especially for those of us who may be asked to help in the sacristy. We also ask you, Lord, to help us so that whatever that we have learned here will be put to good use to glorify your name. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with and your with spirit. spirit. And mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Father. Good night, Father. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, Father. Good night, everyone. Good night, Father.